What is going on people of the internet? My name of course is Panther and welcome to One Perfect Map. This is a series of videos where zombies content creators go in depth on why we love and appreciate a certain zombie map. There will be a link in the description with a playlist to all the other videos in this series. I'm glad to be a part of it and let's just jump right into it. You've seen from the title, but I'm going to be going in depth on the map Revelations. This is a truly underrated gem in my opinion and is one of the most fun and entertaining zombie maps of all time. I understand that not everyone shares my sentiment, but that's why I wanted to create this video and review this map with all of you. Let's start back in the summer of 2016. Garod Krovi is dropped and we finally completed the easter egg. We're watching the end cutscene with the highest level of emotion I have seen from zombies to this point. Hearing the pain Primus Nikolai felt speaking with Ultimus Nikolai. Just painful. The cutscene ends with our characters' souls being sent off and we hear the rumblings of something on a black screen. Then the word, Revelations. I could not have been more excited. Let's actually throw it back to my reaction to seeing that pop up. was crazy. I was internally screaming and dying for what would be the final Black Ops 3 maps, besides Chronicles of course, and then it released. I wish I'd recorded my first playthrough of this map because I was in so much shock and awe. The idea of having most of the previous maps colliding together was such a great idea. I would love to say that I had thought of this idea prior and that I had some kind of power to predict the future, but I didn't. This was such a simple idea, but executed very well. While some state that this map is unoriginal as it draws from things in past games, I would argue that this is far from the truth. Yes, there are really only two new areas to play in, Spawn and the giant gummy worm's stomach, but every other location is a twisted version of a previous map. The Wonder Weapons are just the Apothecan's Servant and the Thunder Gun, and the Specialist is the Ragnaroks from Derizendrak. But a map is much more than its areas and weapons. They make up a good part of it, but that's not all that you should be looking at. Let's first talk about the layout. There are four different islands on this map. You have the spawn island, and that branches off in two directions. If you go to the right, you'll head to a combination of Shangri-La, Derizendrak, and Kino Der Toten. The mixing of the Shangri-La starting room going up the stairs to what would be the Pack-a-Punch area, but actually breaking into the undercroft of Derizendrak was beautiful. We even have the anti-gravity back, and by completing an obstacle course, you can earn yourself a free perk. Going past Derizendrak, we finally break into the projection area of Kino. We are finally able to run along the top row of seats, which is something that we've never been able to do. Kino is flooded with water and the stage looks a little bit different, but still brings the feelings of nostalgia. Finally, if you run to the other side of the seats at Kino, there is a jump pad which takes you to the next island. You take a trip to Verrucht, and it's almost the entire map of Verrucht, which is incredible. The upper level is a mixture of Verrucht and some lab equipment reminiscent of Zetsubo no Shima. The upper level is a bit more open, so we can access areas that we weren't able to previously. And then the ground level is Verrucht. But instead of the fountain, we have the corruption engine. More to come on that. And this island is where most people take advantage of high round strategies. The fastest spawns are here in Verrucht. I'm sure you've all seen the strategy, sitting in a corner with the Apothecan Servant just blasting it while zombies spawn in. It's a very simple process. Moving on, if you take the other jump pad on this side of the island, you are sent to the next island. And the next island consists of just pure beauty and nostalgia. By taking the Verruck jump pad, you get sent to the cafeteria in Mob of the Dead. One of the most classic training areas of all time. Just an excellent area to be in and you get so much excitement from being there. But not only do you have the cafeteria, but you can also find a bigger area outside where you can find cells and a room with dead bodies. From here, you have two ways to move on to the next area. You have a door that opens directly into Origins, or you can run through a buried tunnel bringing you to the top of the excavation site at Origins. That's right, by running through a tunnel from Buried, you reach the Pack-a-Punch location on Origins. The entirety of Gen 3 and the trenches are brought back. This is just incredible. Not only are you at Origins, but they brought back the flogger for this area from Shinonuma. Running through the trenches will take you to the final jump pad, taking you back to spawn. 
The layout is amazing. Each island has a corruption engine, which after being powered on will provide power to that island similar to Origins. Then they can also be used as a turret to mow down zombies. Then a portal is opened, and that portal takes you to none other than the entirety of Nocturne Toten, with some minor changes. Here you have Juggernog and the only buildable bench. Noting the only buildables on this map are the Dragon Shield returning from Garad Krovi, and the Keeper Protector, which is just an amazing sidekick. The Dragon Shield, well, you all know how that works, just a regular shield with a fiery dragon blast, and the Keeper Protector will summon a good Keeper, and this Keeper will lay waste to the zombies and other enemies. This Keeper will also follow you around and is a part of the easter egg. Moving back into Noct, by powering all of the engines, you can trap the giant gummy worm and fly into his stomach, which is where you access Pack-a-Punch on this map. It also has four vents inside that you can go out and it takes you to each island respectively. What is a small detail but drives so much of this map for me is the sound design and music changes depending on what map or area you're in. The second you approach Mob of the Dead, you hear the eerie music from the original map, and it's amazing. Going to Noct, you have the original round change music. It's just a very nice touch. The three islands besides Spawn all have parts for the Shield and Keeper Protector. They also have areas to release the Keeper Protector, so you're never too far away from help. The skybox is just absolutely beautiful and stunning to look at. You can't look at Revelations and tell me the map is not beautiful. The lighting, the colors, the pack-a-punch camos, everything is just so beautiful. Moving on to the actual features of the map, we've already talked about a few. The Dragon Shield, Keeper Protector, and the Flogger. But there is so much more. Of course, we have the main wonder weapons, the Thunder Gun, which we hadn't seen since Black Ops 1, and the Apothecan Servant, but now with an actual upgrade process. No longer were we teased with the upgrades of this in Shadows. We finally have an actual upgrade. Then of course, the Ragnaroks from Derizendrak and Little Arnies, rather than Monkeys. And these even also have an upgrade process. The good news. All of these are in the box. If you don't want to go on a quest to get the Wonder Weapons and Specialists, you just spin the box for it and it's there. You can't upgrade the Apothecan Servant without a small quest, but it's pretty easy. You just blast some space rocks and throw it in the pack bunch machine. Then we have all of the hats. Al's hat, the wolf hat, the viking hat, keeper hat, margwa hat, fury hat, the knight's hat, and the god mask. We thought Garot Krovi had some great add-on features, but these are incredible. Adding extra speed, health, or even both, these hats were incredible. The God Mask is the most overpowered thing in this entire map. It virtually makes you undefeatable unless you're just terrible at the game. Then there are the time trials. Basically, just by going through the rounds in a certain amount of time, you get melee weapons. And these melee weapons are pretty fun, but not entirely useful. But again, they are pretty fun. And let's not forget Takio's Katana, which we had been clamoring for for years. By completing the Katana quest, you also have permanent wall power and crate power, so any weapon you pick up will be upgraded. Then there's the Thompson wall buy and weapon swap, which is small, but still pretty useful. And of course, the challenges, similar to maps like Zetsubo and Karad Krovi. Each player gets tasked with some challenges, but they are optional. They reward you with a pack of punched gun, a free max ammo, and an extra perk. Some challenges are difficult, but some are quite easy to obtain. Let's talk about enemies now. There are so many enemies, but it doesn't overload you like other maps or the entire game of Black Ops 4. Here we have Zombies, Furies, and Keepers as the standard round enemies. Then if you're in the Apothecan, Spiders will also spawn in. We also have Elemental Marguas and some Parasites and then the Panzer. This is just a combination of all the things we've seen from the past, but it's incorporated pretty well. The mixing of Margwa types and the Panzer makes each mini-boss feel different enough that you aren't bored fighting the same type over and over. It's great to make things interesting, as you never really know what type of mini-boss you're going to get. Now, let's move on to the Easter Egg, which is the biggest point of contention I feel most people have on this map. Doing this Easter Egg a few times, I can agree with a lot to the general consensus that it's very RNG based. To getting a specific weapon or equipment from the box, to finding a random egg spawn in tight corners and hidden places. Another thing is that the Easter Egg steps are just weird. Like for example, you collect bones and put the bones together to create Sophia's body, and then from her body comes an audio reel? Um, yeah, I don't really know about that. 
The ending boss fight is just a repeat of the Shadows of Evil fight with the Shadow Man, but this map extends to a different level. The arena you are in is incredible, and with all the changing arena settings, it just makes it super fun and interesting. I love the anti-gravity one, it's just really fun. Sure, again, it is just a repeat, but it's a great arena with many different challenges to do that make it different. And we are going to lead into the final point with the easter egg that I really want to discuss, the ending cutscene. This was probably what the most amount of people were disappointed by, the final map for Aether, supposedly. We were told this was going to put brackets on the story, which is true, it did in fact put brackets around the story. We just had a bit of a divergence in Black Ops 4. Anyways, we defeat the Shadow Man and his Apothecon pals, and everything seems to be peaceful and fine. However, by doing this, our four main characters should have also been wiped from existence. But, due to the blood vials, they're still around. Monty threatens to wipe them out like what should have happened, but instead he sends them back to the 1300s to fight and become Primus, thus restarting the cycle. Not everyone liked the fact that there wasn't a definitive ending, but I truly like this ending so much more than Togdr Toten. The main reason why is that it's just metaphorical for the game mode that we've been playing for over 12 years. Zombies released with World at War all the way back in 2008, and ever since, Zombies has just been about survival. It's a simple horde mode that has grown over many years, but ultimately, you just go up in wave after wave, killing zombies only for it to just never end. Most maps don't have a way to end them other than dying, so again, you go wave after wave of killing the undead, only for you to be killed and starting back over at round one. It's a cycle. The actual gameplay loop itself is a cycle. You go for as long as you can until you die, and then you just start back over. Just like the Revelations ending cutscene, the entire story was a cycle that was never broken. It was a perfect metaphor, and I thought it was an ending that was just perfect. Again, some people wanted a finale that was dramatic and huge with a definitive ending, but me? I loved the idea of the game mode we have been playing for years. The story we have grown to love is just an endless cycle in both story and gameplay. So, there you have it. While the community seems to share the opinion that Revelations is just average, I argue that it's much better than its reputation. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Please subscribe for more content like this. Very excited for Cold War Zombies to be dropping next week. I will be playing that so much. Again, to see the other creators take their dabble on a specific map, there will be a link in the description for a playlist of all of these videos. Thank you so much to the community, and thank you all so much for watching. My name, of course, has been Panther, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Call me like a hell cut.